Oh and my we can God. talk Get about the hell out of here. We can dude. talk about Rogers out of here. Okay. What is the need to bring up the Yankees? It's just, it's just stuff to bring up. Are you kidding me? Come on, dude. This came out of nowhere. Clemson is a top team. Don't start with that. Clemson's a top team, no doubt. 100%. Unless it's on Saturday. Then, then they might move down. <laughs> Welcome back to Go Chat. We are here with episode 79. We have a great one for you. Baseball is four days away. Tommy, myself, and Mike are so excited. Matt is not a huge baseball guy. Anyone who knows watches this knows. Matt's definitely still – he's intrigued about the games. We have a huge baseball baseball episode for you today, and I think that's going to include our Go to the Number segment. It's Go to the Number 79. There's a lot of great numbers out there, a lot of great names to go with those numbers. Number 79, Tommy, who you got? It's got to be Jose Abreu for me, reigning AL MVP. Last year, he was just tremendous. He uh, hit 370 with 19 homers and uh, 80 or no, 60 ribbies. Sorry, I don't have my glasses on. But he was outstanding for the White Sox last year. And overall in his career, he has been 294 lifetime hitter and uh, 198 career home runs. So he had over 200 this year. So he's put together a great career. And you know, he's right in the heart of the lineup of that White Sox team that has a chance to, you know, really contend for the American League. And we're going to talk about that. But he's my goal, the number 79. Matt? I'm going to go with Jose Abreu, too. <laughs> Tommy pretty much uh, nailed it right on the uh, – I don't know. He just pretty much got it correctly. Everything I wanted to say, I'm going to agree with Jose Abreu and Tommy in this uh, case. Michael? I disagree. I'm going to go with a, a left tackle from the New York Giants, Rosie Brown, nine-time Pro Bowl, six-time All-Pro, one-time NFL champ, and he's a part of the Hall of Fame 1950s team. You know, I like Jose Abreu. He, he's a nice guy. He's a really good hitter, but his career is just not nearly complete as Rosie's as Rosie Brown's is. Um, he, he's a great hitter right now, but he, he has to keep this up to even think about catching up to Rosie Brown. I mean, just a quick disclaimer, Mike. You picked Mike Trout at number 27. And, I mean, he still has a long way to go in his career. Oh, Mike Trout, Jose Abreu, definitely different players. I'm not saying they're not no, the same player. player. Definitely different players. But but also, another disclaimer, Tommy played Vitamin Guerrero instead of Mike Trout. Um, I'm going to go with Jose Abreu here as well. <laughs> MVP, Rookie of the Year, three-time All-Star, three-time Silver Slugger, uh, Major League Player of the Year. As Tommy mentioned, great season last year, I think. He, he's going to be a part of a huge Chicago White Sox team this year. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. But, yeah, Jose Abreu here for me. I think that wraps up. Uh, go to the number 79. Like Connor said, huge baseball episode. I am so thrilled <clears throat> to hey, talk yeah. about baseball here. And I know Tommy is, too. We'll catch you guys after the break. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Goat Chat. We're just a few days away from opening day of Major League Baseball. Big season on the way. Ready for an 162-game season that we didn't get last year. So definitely looking forward to that. And we got to enjoy it because there's going to be a strike next year. But um, but we're, <laughs> we're going to get into all of it right now. Um, we're going to talk about teams to come out of the ALNL and who we think is going to win it all. But um you know, I'll start with you, Connor. Who do you think is going to come out of the AL? Lots of good teams there. Obviously, the Yankees are the favorite right now, but the White Sox, we alluded to them earlier um, in the go of the number. They have a really good young team, but they have had some injuries. Eloy Jimenez out for five to six months, so he's going to miss the majority of the season. That's a big loss, but, um, you know, definitely some teams that could come out of there. Who's your pick? So I, I would say that the Chicago White Sox, in my opinion, could be above the Yankees. Now, I am a big Yankees fan. You guys see this behind me. But El Hoy Jimenez, the injury to El Hoy, I think definitely uh, hurts them there, the five to six months. Didn't he, like, rupture rupture something, a muscle of some sort on his body? I don't know which one. Um, and um, Pectoral, pectoral. Uh, I, I think the Yankees are now number one as far as the AL. And, you know, we can mention teams like the Houston Astros who made it to the World Series last year. Year. but in the 60 game season they were under 500 I think in a whole full 162 game season I don't think they find themselves in the playoffs um Tampa Bay had a really really bad off season I don't see them making it back to the uh the World Series 
yeah, Houston wasn't in the World Series. Tampa Bay was. My apologies. That was the ALCS. Wow, two IL teams there. <laughs> um, no, I, th- I think the Yankees can. I think the Yankees really boosted up a a pitching rotation in the offseason, adding Corey Kluber, um, trading for Jameson Tyone. Um, and, I mean, the swings that we've been seeing from the Yankees in the off or in spring training, one of the swings from Aaron Judge, it was just so smooth, so far over the left-field fence. I mean, Stanton as well. We're, we're seeing a good form of Gary Sanchez. Glaber Torres has put the ball out. I, I, I think this could be the time for the Yankees. I think they went out and they grabbed these pitchers because they believe that this year is their year, and if it – and if they can't take advantage of it now, they may be past that time. So, so I think this this year, specifically, I know Yankee fans say this every year, that this year is the year. I believe that this year specifically is the year for the New York Yankees. Well, I'd have to agree. I'll get into that in a little bit. But, uh, Mike, what do you think? Who do you have coming out of the AL? Um, yeah, I mean, it has to be the New York Yankees. I feel like really only the White Sox were – we're going to be able to challenge them for a spot in the World Series. But now with Eloy Jimenez out for five to six months, that's kind of uh, out of the window. Maybe if he comes back, uh, I don't think he'll be back in time for the playoffs. I'm not sure. But even if he does come back, you know, you don't know how he's going to play it, coming off an injury and all that stuff, right? But <clears throat> last offseason, they added their star pitcher. This offseason, they got their pitching depth. There's absolutely no excuses for the Yankees to make it to the World Series this time around. Their window is closing. They're going to have to start paying Aaron Judge and all of their, you know, players, right? So their window is now, and if they don't make it to the World Series, we said this last year, but really this year, considering how the pitching depth that they added with what Connor said, Kluber, Tyone, um, and, and a couple other pitchers in the offseason, um, this is it. It's, it's boom or bust, and they – you know, who knows, they could win the World Series given how good their offense is, but they have to at least make it there. They have to get past the ALCS, which has uh, really doomed them the, over the past five years. And their time is now. It, it just has to be the Yankees. I don't want to have to see that Chapman smile walking off the mound again. I've seen it one too many times as a Yankees fan. Hey, that's true. Matt, who do you have? It's got to be the New York Yankees. Um, I, I really don't see another team possibly. Possibly, I don't really see another team really contending with them towards the top. Possibly a team like the Toronto Blue Jays getting George Springer, obviously. Vlad Guerrero Jr., who played great last season, could really have a great season this year. And then obviously Bo Bichette on my fantasy team. Of course, he wasn't on my fantasy team last year, so it's my guy. Um, but no, I think the Yankees, like you guys said, they got their pitching depth. They had they got <clears throat> Eric Cole last year. And then they got guys like Aaron Judge and uh, DJ LeMahieu. They got a really good offense. So I think that it's the Yankees' time time to shine. Will they make it past the ALCS? Possibly. I think that this year – I said this last year too, and that just didn't work out for the four of us. But I think this year uh, could be their, their, their time to go back to the World Series. Yeah, I agree with everything that all you said. I mean, it is the Yankees' time. I think you said the window is closing, Mike. You're 100% right with that. And they have to win this year, I think. And, you know, could they do it next year? Certainly. But this is the time. And I feel really good about this rotation, especially how they pitched in spring training. Corey Kluber looked really good. And he's only pitched a combined seven innings over the past uh, two seasons. So, you know, That's the same with Jamison Tyone. He didn't pitch last year. So it's going to be interesting to see how they bounce back and, you know, how they respond to a full workload Um, and really everybody because nobody pitched a full year last year. So, um, you know, Garrett Cole bouncing back. And um, another guy in the rotation is Domingo Herman, which, you know, he's had a lot of off the field issues that's been well documented, but he's pitched uh, very well in spring training so he'll make an impact he'll be a big part of the rotation um you know this spring he pitched nine innings struck out 13 batters didn't even give up a run so um he won that fifth spot on friday and uh you know the bullpen is very solid but at the same time zach Britton's out for you know about three months and um they brought in darren o'day which i think he's going to play a pivotal role out of the bullpen there for them 
Um, and, you know, Justin Wilson, he's back with the Yankees. Good lefty arm, but he is hurt. So, um, you know, hopefully he'll be able to bounce back and join the team soon. But like you said, that lineup, you know, I've said on the show many, many times, Aaron Judge, we saw what Giancarlo was able to do um, hitting five home runs last postseason. When he's healthy, you know, he's a former MVP winner. He can do it this year, I think, as well. I certainly think he can get back to that point. Clint Frazier, what he's been able to do, um, you know, he's been limited. So I think that, you know, giving the opportunity to play a full season will be huge. Um, and, you know, Aaron Hicks, on base machine, he's going to help out. And then obviously you got DJ LeMahieu for sure. I mean, he can win MVP. We don't have to say any more about DJ won the batting title last year. Um, you know, I think he's the first person to win in both the AL and NL. And uh, Glaber Torres, he'll make an impact as well. But, you know, I'm rambling on about the Yankees. But I certainly think that this is their year. And, you know, just to touch on the White Sox, they're a young team that I think, you know, it's going to come down to them, uh, the Yankees and the White Sox. But I think the Yankees have the edge. I think it's, it's going to come down to how it always does every year for the Yankees. It's going to be the bullpen. But um, I, if I want the Yankees to win a ring, both both for me as a fan, but also it's potentially Brett Gardner's last season in the MLB. I want him to get another ring. He was on the 2019. He's the longest tenured Yankee on the team. I, I want him to be able to go out with, with, with two, two World Series rings. Absolutely. Man, Tommy, I, I think you were rambling on there. We I were, was rambling. Hey, you know, I love the Yankees. It's rare I get to talk about them. So, were, were, were you breathing? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, hey, that's he just went to a zone. Yeah, that's about as excited as I get out here. But, uh, well, hey, I think we can switch gears now over into the uh, the National League. Obviously, the reigning World Series champs are coming out of the National League in the Los Angeles Dodgers. Um, I guess this, this question will be posed two different ways. Who's going to come out of the NL? And is there a team that can contend with the Dodgers in the NL? Tommy, I'll throw it to you first. Hopefully you don't ramble on for, for as long this time. Yeah, I'm going to try not to ramble. You know, I honestly think the Padres are going to win this division. Hot take. I think that they have a really great young team. What they were able to do in the offseason there in about, you know, a span of a week, the people they were able to add, Blake Snell, Yu Darvish, um, some names are slipping my mind right now, but you know, that line with Tatis, the extension they were able to sign him to, you have Manny Machado, and then you know, you have young players, but then you have veterans like Eric Hosmer. I just think it's a really good mix, and uh, I really like this team. And you know, I certainly don't want to take anything away from the Dodgers, reigning world champions, and you know, they have several players there that can win MVPs. and their rotation is great as well. You have Clayton Kershaw, one of the best pitchers of all time, Walker Bueller. Um, you know, they added Trevor Bauer. They got even better. So I think that the Dodgers, they certainly are going to be up there, but the Padres could compete as well. Matt, same question. I can't go against the Dodgers, baby. No, I, I think I think LA is poised to get another uh, – go back to the World Series, you know – um, getting Trevor Bauer into the pitching rotation. You still got Mookie Betts, Cody Bellinger. You still got those studs on offense. Uh, Tommy, you know, Padres are great, Tommy. I, I think that they're definitely good enough to make the World Series. You know, you Snell, Darvish, uh, and that pitching rotation. But, no, I'm, I'm going to have to say that I think the Dodgers are not going to be stopped. I mean – other than the Nationals, the Dodgers are the best team in the NL. I mean, of course, the Nationals are the best team in the NL, but got to hand it to the Dodgers. Um, also, I can think the, the Braves might be able to uh, make a run towards that World Series. I mean, we saw the Braves last uh, season. They went to the ALCS, right, against the Dodgers, and they ended up losing. But I still think that they're a really fantastic team, uh, you know, with, with Freddie Freeman, Acuna Jr., uh, Mike Soraka is going to be coming back from off of his injury. Um, yeah, but I think the Braves can definitely make it, but I'm going to go with the Dodgers. Ultimately, Dodgers are my final pick. <laughs> Look at Matt bringing out all the baseball knowledge. Where, where are you hiding all that? How about that? I, it's just in the back of my head. Max Freed, too, on the <laughs> Braves. He's a really good pitcher. Mike. 
same question. Yeah, I'm going with the Dodgers too. The Padres are a fantastic team. They added so much, but the Dodgers were so dominant wire to wire last season. And they added Trevor Bauer as much as I dislike him from absolutely trolling the Mets and then switching gears and heading to the Dodgers this off season. Um, but he's a fantastic pitcher and he, he's going to pitch really well, especially considering the defense that, um, that the Dodgers have behind him. I mean, their rotation is so loaded. You're either going to have one of three, uh, Julio Urias, David Price, and Dustin May in the bullpen. I mean, that, that could be a two or three starter on most teams in the MLB. Their rotation is stacked. They have no holes in their lineup, and their bullpen is still dominant, especially when you consider adding one of those um, high-level starting pitchers. One of my worries about uh, the Padres is their bullpen. They lost Kirby Yates this offseason, and they don't really have anyone to um, replace him. Uh, their projected closer right now is uh, Emilio Pagan, and they, they got uh, Mark Melanson, who's <clears throat> a nice uh, setup pitcher. But really, they, they need a bona fide closer, and I feel like that's what you see with a lot of these World Series winning teams, just one of the best closers in the league. And also, this is nitpicking, but their fifth starter really um, is nothing. I, I, I forgot who it is, but I mean, it doesn't I, compare to what um, the Dodgers have. Um, so the Dodgers are just an overall better team. If I had to pick a team to challenge the Dodgers, it would obviously be the Padres. But still, Dodgers are one of the best teams we've ever seen in our lifetimes. I mean, I, I still think it doesn't compare to the Dodgers, but I still think the Padres pitching rotation is pretty decent. I mean, yeah. you know, with Snell Darvish, like I said, and then uh, Lamet. Am I pronouncing this right? It's Lamet, right? Lamet. 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 You know, obviously he had a bicep injury, but before that he was pitching a 2.09 ERA, 93 strikeouts in 69 innings, playing great there. And then Joe Mosgrove coming from the – Pirates, who was one of the worst teams in the MLB last season, but he was still efficient throwing on that bad team, throwing 55 strikeouts and just over 32 innings. <laughs> and then Chris Paddock, you know, he had a really good outstanding rookie year in 2019, going nine and seven and having a 3.36 ERA. And, you know, maybe with less pressure, he will rebound from the bottom of the rotate at the bottom of rotation. So I, I think he can really have an impressive 2021 season. So I think the Padres pitching rotation is decent. But, Mike, I agree with you. It doesn't compare with the Dodgers. Matt, that was incredible. Who is this? Who, who is this? I know. That was He's not completely inept about baseball, guys. Come on. <laughs> wow. Oh, my so, goodness. It, so I, I'm going to give my take now. Tommy said the Padres were a hot take. Matt, you mentioned two teams in their division, and you, you, you lack to mention them. You know, the Padres are good. I, I came on here um, when Tati signed his deal, and I said it was a little premature. He, he succeeded in a 60-game season. We had He's not even played a full 162 games yet in the MLB. I, I definitely think he can be an all-around great shortstop for the Padres. For, for years to come, the Padres have a great team there. I have to pick the winners of the MLB free agency as, as my team in the National League, and it has to be the New York Mets. It has to be the Mets. They don't have Tim Tebow. How are they going to do it? I know Tim <laughs> Tebow right. retiring. No, I, I just think Francisco Lindor has looked really, really good in spring training. I mean, they're they're pitching Jacob Degrom's in a hundred and two, like like on the regular, on the regular. I mean, we're talking about rotations: Jacob Degrom, Noah Syndergaard, Marcus Stroman. Uh, Mike, who are the two other pitchers? Who are their four and five? Carrasco, Tywan Walker. I mean, that, that again, that's when they're all healthy. Uh, currently, Carrasco and um, Syndergaard are out with injuries, but they still have a ton of um, rotation depth. depth. Uh, David Peterson, his rookie year last year, three year RA. Joey Lucchese that they got from the Padres, still a capable starter. So unlike last year when they were throwing out guys like uh, Rick Porcello, Michael Waka, and Corey Oswald, all these no names, they actually have some depth so they could sustain these inner injuries. But Connor, go ahead. I just think the um, I'm looking for their opening day roster, their projected opening day roster right now. But we we saw Pete Alonso kind of kind of he he struggled a little bit last year in the 60 game season. But before that, I mean he, he is the he is the record holder for 
to rookie home runs in the MLB, beating beating Aaron Judge. I I, I think we can see a, 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 the the Pete Alonso of old in this upcoming season, and then you have Pete Alonso with with Francisco Lindor, who I mentioned is playing really good, and then you have Jeff McNeil at second base. I mean, Dominic Smith is there. You have JD Davis at third. Dominic Smith, Michael Conforto, Kevin Pillar, Brandon Nimmo, who are all their different outfielders. You had Albert Amora there for depth. Um, I mean, I, I just really think this is a really good all-around team. And, yes, they have to contend with the Braves in that division. I, I truly believe the NL East could be one of the hotly contested divisions in the entire um, MLB with the Braves. The, the Phillies, I think, are going to be really good this year. I, I think the second-year connection there with Joe you know, Girardi – Joe Girardi is good. The Nationals, I mean, Juan Soto is always a good player. You can always do good things. Um, and you know, the Marlins, they they made the they made the postseason last year. Um, it's a very young team, but they have a lot of potential there with Don Mattingly as the the head coach. Um, I, it's a very good division. Um, but if there's a team that I see coming out of that division and then being able to make a run in the postseason through to the World Series, I think it has to be the Mets. I, I think New York is in the best spot in baseball. For, that they've had for sports in a very long time. I agree. I mean, and hey, Connor, I think you're coming around now. Now you see my point, how exciting this is for baseball. They have two great New York teams. But no, I agree with you. I think that the Mets are certainly going to compete. And I think that you said it with the NL East. I think they're hands down the best division in baseball. And I don't think it's close. I think that um, the Marlins are the only team that really doesn't have a chance to compete for the division even they made the postseason last year so you know I don't want to rule them out but like you said the Mets pitching it's it's just tremendous and their lineup solid but um you know you mentioned the Phillies I you can't count them out either I know a lot of people have them finishing in fourth but you know you have Bryce Harper you have former MVP Andrew McCutcheon um and then you have Didi you have JT Real Muto. I mean, it's a really solid team. So I'm excited to see uh, who comes out of that division. But I agree. Matt Kane gave all the stats. I mean, we could have just had the segment right there. But yeah, uh, that, I mean, that was amazing. But the Braves rotation, like you said, uh, Mike Soroka coming back, Max Fried, um, and, you know, Freddie Freeman coming off of an MVP season. So um, I, you know, I like that division all around. It's going to be fun to watch. I mean, all right, so now we now we need – oh, go ahead. I mean, you know, going to the Nationals, I think that they, they possibly can put themselves back into the playoffs like we saw two years ago. Obviously, their pitching rotation, they have Max Scherzer, Steven Strasburg, Patrick Corman. But I think it's very top-heavy, and we're going to have to depend a lot on John Lester and Joe Ross. I mean, last year, Lester had an ERA of 5.16, and the year prior, 4.46. And then Joe Ross had an ERA of 5.48 in 2019. Obviously opted out last season, so it might be a little tough. And, you know, last year their their pitching was just abysmal, <laughs> ERA of 5.09. I think it's very top-heavy, and it's going to depend on Steven Strasburg's injuries and if Patrick Corbin can s- sustain success before, uh, before last year. But, hey, it's going to be a really good division to uh, see if the Nationals can get themselves back up in their playoffs. Phillies are great, too. Obviously, I was joking about the Tebow. The Mets are going to be good, uh, unfortunately. But, hey, it's going to be a really good division. I agree with you guys there. Matt, you are impressing the heck out of me today. I mean, you're, you're, at, you're really, like, when Tommy comes and he brings, like, these amazing NFL stats when we're talking about the NFL, like, I mean, you're at that level right now. This is impressive. Oh, he's, above that. he's above that level. I, it's not even close. Man, Kate, okay, this is one of the most impressive things I've ever seen. It's just all, all right, in the back so of guess, my head. It's just all in the I, back I of my guess, head. Uh, yeah, all in the back of the head. I'm sure if you shared your screen right now on, on Zoom, we wouldn't see any, like a bunch of tabs, MLB.com, uh, baseball reference. I'm sure those wouldn't be on the screen. I'm, I'm not on any of those websites. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll believe you. I, 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 I can share you. my screen if you really want. No, it's okay. Okay. It's unneeded. I, I, I trust you. So now, I, I guess now that we gave our favorites out of the AL and NL, I think the end of the season always ends with a World Series champion. I gave, we, we got to guess that. We got, we got to pick. Tommy, World Series champ. Well, you know who I'm going to go with. And I'm biased, but I, I honestly think it is um, – you know, I think this team is good. I think the Yankees are going to win the whole thing because I think that really when healthy, they are the most complete team. And, 
I mean, that's the big question though. Have they been healthy? No, over the past three, four years, they haven't been healthy at all. So that's going to be the big question mark. But if that rotation can stay healthy, and again, we touched on it, but with the rotation, it looks great right now, but there are a lot of question marks. Corey Kluber coming back, Tyone, Herman, those guys haven't pitched full seasons in a couple of years. But I think that this team certainly has the potential to do it with their lineup. Um, I got the Yankees. Yeah, if the if the Yankee, I, if the Yankees stay healthy, uh, they're they're the best team in baseball, and I don't think it's close. Um, I mean, it may be close with the Dodgers potentially. If they're healthy, I think they're the best team in baseball. Um, so I have to go with the Yankees to win the World Series as well. And you guys can make faces. That may be a little bit of a biased approach because I do have the Yankees fan ha- flag hanging here. But if they're healthy, they're the best team in baseball. And we saw that with Giancarlo Stanton there at the end of last season in the postseason. Yeah, you're not biased, Connor. You're just right. So Go ahead, Matt. <laughs> you know, they, they were so good. The best team in baseball. They didn't, they didn't even make it out of the divisional round. But anyways, Matt, go ahead. I, I feel like we always – we always say if they're healthy and then they end up not being healthy. <laughs> so, um, but for my pick, I'm going to have to go with <laughs> Dodgers. I know it's very chalky. I guess I'm taking the, the best team in the MLB, but like, like I just said 30 seconds ago, they're the best team in the MLB. They have those really great three clear cut starters pitching for them. Walker Bueller, Trevor Bauer, Clayton Kershaw, maybe the fourth and the fifth spots up in the air, obviously with David Price sitting out of uh 2020 and before that having an ERA of 4.28, but I think they they have a really strong, uh, strong team on offense and just those really great three clear cut starters. I can't not go with the Dodgers here. Oh, this is incredible. This is incredible. Mike, go ahead. So <laughs> Go ahead, Mike. Yeah. I'm going to have to go with the Dodgers too. There are so many, Question marks with the Yankees. Corey Kluber only pitching set. What you say, Tommy? Seven innings the past two years. He's injury prone. Uh, I bet James you those were really Kyle, good seven man. innings, though. What? They're tremendous. Yeah. I I bet those were really good seven innings. That's why the Yankees went out and signed them because those seven innings in the last two years, best seven innings of baseball ever. And he didn't That's give up a run them. last year in in one inning, so he was great. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> Best pitcher in baseball, I guess. But anyways, Tyone has been out for the past two years. He, he was injured as well. So he, as much as I like the depth that they added, I don't trust this Yankees team to be healthy all season. And he, even if they are, they still aren't better than the Dodgers and maybe even the Padres. So I'm going to have to go with the Dodgers with uh, my World Series pick. But they are um, far and above the best team in the MLB. And if at, on paper – they should win the World Series. But obviously, in any sport, there are tons of surprises. So who knows? Maybe Trevor Bauer completely like explodes the locker room. I would not be surprised by that. But at this time right now, I'm going to have to go with the Dodgers. Well, hey, I think we're all gearing up for a great MLB season. We've had a great conversation here. It's not like our last MLB prediction show when it was a little mini goat chat movie. We went over every <laughs> single division, every single team. We kind of refined it here a little bit. We allowed Tommy to have us a little bit of ramble. Matt coming up with some crazy stats. This is incredible. It was a great segment. Um, Sweet 16, we got basketball. Basketball played yesterday. Yeah, the first round of Sweet 16. Obviously, we don't know those. We are filming on Saturday. But uh, we have four great games again on Sunday, today, as you were watching. So uh, we're going to break those down for our goat picks next. Welcome back to Goat Chat. We are back with the goat picks. Look at the leaderboard. It's it's getting pretty tight. I mean, I'm two behind Mike. Connor's three behind me. I think Tommy's a billion behind Connor. It feels like, but uh, we got four. <laughs> I'm kidding, Tommy. You're you're like four. I'm pretty sure four. Hey, hey you don't have to sugarcoat. I've been pretty terrible. So <laughs> we got four great Sweet Sixteen games going on today. Um, first game, Gonzaga Creighton. It's at two ten p.m. Gonzaga is the number one seed. Uh, Mike, who are you going to go with? I'm going with Gonzaga here. Best team in the nation. That's all I have to say. I'm not going against Gonzaga. I will hate to, I hate to break it to you guys. I'm not going against Gonzaga anytime soon. Connor? Got to be Gonzaga. And Tommy? I'm going to mix it up. I'm going with Creighton. Creighton's going to come out here, pull off a big upset. And, uh, you know, I need to gain some ground on the leaderboard. So 
you know, can't hurt. Tommy's going to go. Time. Tommy's going to go against every single one of our picks. Not necessarily. You never know. <laughs> Tommy, you could have went against us like a billion different other times, just not this one. Hey, I don't even know what games we're picking, so we're gonna wait. Uh, this is almost like me taking Florida over Alabama college football. <laughs> Michigan, oh. Florida State's the next game at five. Michigan's the one seed. Florida State's the four seed. Mike? Yeah, I thought that LSU was going to beat Michigan um, last week. Obviously, that didn't happen. They, they got cold by the end of the game. But I, I still think Michigan is going to get upset in, um, in their region. I think FSU is going to come out, play that lockdown defense that they played against uh, Colorado last week. And it, it's probably going to be a close game, but I still got FSU coming out on top. I'm going to take Michigan because I want to catch up to Mike, but I think Florida State's going to win if you guys care at all. But I'm going to take Michigan. And Tommy. You're only two games behind, though. Yeah, but I got to make ground somewhere. Yeah, I'm going to take Florida State. Let's go, Tommy. Let's go, buddy. Next game is UCLA and Alabama at 17. <laughs> Mike, <laughs> we got to go with. I'm not going with UCLA. I'm going with Alabama. I'm going to go with Bama, too. Yeah, it's got to be Bama. Yeah, I got to go with Bama, too. I want to get at least Darn, one. Tommy. Yeah, I got to get at least one win. <laughs> Last game. I don't want to take Triton, but. <laughs> Oregon, USC, 945 tonight. Oregon, 7, USC, 6. Mike. This is this is a very good game. Obviously, Oregon shot the lights out against Iowa, but I think that's more a testament to how bad Iowa's defense was than uh, how good Oregon is. So I'm gonna go with USC here. They played fantastic against Kansas. Great pick by me too, by the way. I'm gonna go with USC, Connor. I'm gonna go USC, Tommy. I'm gonna go with Oregon here. Yeah, I, I kind of played a little defense on that last pick against Connor. But another great round of Go Picks, as you guys know. Go Picks March Madness. We're picking every game, so we'll have picks on Monday and Tuesday. Mike loves it. And that, that's going to wrap Mike's, up. Mike shaking in the booth. I'm that's so going to wrap up the sad. season, too. So we got we got today, counting today's games, we got. We have 16 on. games left. 16 games because we're picking. I'm for... talking about in the series. We have like eight. We have eight games left in the series. Four today, four tomorrow, right? Then we got two. Not counting not counting Saturday. We got four Sunday, two Monday, two Tuesday. Obviously, right. we're picking Saturday games a day earlier. So we have 12. Yeah. But it's, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Do I have any chance right. whatsoever? Is it over? I mean, I guess um, that's Tommy. Tommy, Tommy, you Tommy you're, you're eliminated. We'll get ready for the next one. There you All go. Right. Why? Well, maybe you can win a go to the week this week. We're going to move into go to the week next. <laughs> Welcome back to Go Chat. We're going to close off this episode with a go of the week, a.k.a. Buddy Bayheim of the week. Uh, I've won three in a row with Buddy Bayheim now. The lead is literally insane. I'm pretty sure I got 18 wins. Connor has got like nine behind me. So pretty much double that score. Anyways, Tommy, I'm going to start with you. It's been your episode all day, buddy. Who are you going with the go of the week? Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And I'm not going to win. I'm going to go with Kevin Newman of the <laughs> Pittsburgh Pirates, who has been outstanding this spring. He's flown under the radar. He's hitting 708 on the spring, which is just like off the charts. In this past week, he's eight for 10. So he's hit 800 in the past week. And, uh, you know, he hasn't driven in a lot of runs. He's driven in just one run over the past week, but he's hitting for average. And, you know, it's not really his fault. He's on the worst team in Major League Baseball, so he doesn't have guys to drive in. But just wanted to acknowledge him because he's been playing great this whole spring. And, um, yeah, Kevin Newman, go of the week. Connor, I'm going to throw it to you. Who is your go of the week? Man, I got to go with, with the GM of the winning team of the NFL team trade deadline it's got to be pat riley i mean he stole victor oladipo he stole him. i mean the trade of avery bradley kelly olenek kelly olenek and a swapped first round pick which means the heat are still going to be picking in the first round it's just going to be houston's pick which could be better it could be a better pick so i mean you got olenek and avery bradley who really haven't played that much 
all season. And then you get that from Victor Oladipo, who's going to now help Miami run into the playoffs and potentially have a really good another playoff run. Pat Riley, absolutely stole Victor Oladipo. Go to the week. Lock it in. He's the winner. Damn. Mike? That's absolutely ludicrous, especially when you consider my pick. De'Aaron Fox. He, he has played three games this weekend. You want to know how many points he scored? 30, 37, and then a career high 44 on uh, Thursday. Um, he was 72%, 72%, 65, 56% from the field. And he, he was shooting the lights out from three as well in all three of those games. I mean, he's been in a, on an absolute tear. He's showing he's one of the best point guards in the league. Um, he, he can do so many things. He can take you to the hoop. He can pull it from three. He gets to the line. Um, and he's just playing the best basketball um, out of anyone in the NBA the past week. He's been absolutely dominant for the Kings. And if they make the playing tournament, he's going to be the reason why. It's another great pick. I'm not going to go with Buddy Bayheim because I just don't want you guys to feel like um, I, I just keep winning. So with that being said, I'm going to go with Gabriel Landisgog, <laughs> the captain of the Colorado Avalanche. He's extended his point streak to seven now, uh, especially this week with a goal and an assist against Vegas, a goal and assist against Arizona, an assist against Arizona the night before and then one goal to assist against Minnesota. He's been playing absolutely fantastic this past week, and I got to give him credit. As much as I'd want to go with Buddy Beheim for that amazing performance against West Virginia last Sunday, I'm going to have to go with Gabriel Landis. Guy. I don't want to take – I don't. I just don't want to keep taking these wins from you guys. It's like robbing uh, – it's like taking candy from a baby at this point. When I talked to you last night, you said you were going with Buddy Beheim, and I was thinking about going with him, and then you go last, and I can't take Buddy Beheim. Oh, that's Where's you, you, oh my God, Matt played Tommy. Matt played him. He played him. Uh, Matt, oh. Matt. An He's hour ago, he plays play. dirty. That's the only way he wins. That's true. That is the scandalous of goat picks I, and goat of the week. For right now, while you guys are on air and we're all on air, I'm claiming Buddy Beheim for next week's go of the week for now. <laughs> just saying. He's I'm, a player. You can't do that, Matt. It's not even next week yet. Matt, he hasn't even played this week. Like, so I can still claim it. Honestly, you don't claim it. With, claim it. Connor did that with Jared Goff, and nobody even got mad at him. Because <laughs> Jared Goff sucked though. for that game. I didn't oh. pick him. Hate the player, not the game. We All right, Matt, go ahead. Pick so. Buddy Bayham, who's going to lose uh, today to Houston on Saturday. Okay, UConn's going to the Final Four, buddy. Definitely. There you I go. I wish. I you've wish. Been, you've been really good on these March Madness picks. But great we'll, episode. Still great two ahead. Great episode. Ahead. Great episode of Go Chat. Great episode number 79. We got some button heads here at the end. Hey, we're filming this on Saturday. You guys always know that we filmed the day before. Go Orange. We're rooting for a big game tonight, 10 o'clock uh, over Houston. Another great upset. They can do it. They're going to do good. Uh, hey, great episode of Go Chat. Any final thoughts here? Oh, we yeah. got all crickets. Tommy, baseball. Baseball in four days. Get excited. Get excited. Hey. We'll be back here same time, same place next Sunday at 1 o'clock.